So today we are going to deep dive into the world of supply chain management. That is the interconnected world surrounding you. Have you ever wondered how the product or service that you use came into existence from raw material to your position? How things work behind getting the product delivered to you? It's called supply chain management. So please stay tuned. Don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax, and we are going to enjoy this very beautiful topic on supply chain management. Supply chain management is a global network which involves handling of the entire production flow of goods or services, starting from raw material all the way to delivering the final product to the consumer with the aim to match the supply and demand. Supply chain management is essentially a backbone of a modern industry and every company is somehow involved in one or more of a supply chain. It is an invisible force that gets you everything from your morning coffee to the latest smartphone that you have in your hand. In short, it is about delivering the right product at right price, at right location, in right quantity to the right customer at right time. There are basically four different types of flows that happens between the supplier and the consumer or the customer. First is the material flow. That is a flow of physical material or services from supplier to the customer. They are mostly visible in any supply chain. They are like raw material, services, components, semi-finished goods or maybe assembly. Second flow is the financial flow or the flow of cash from customer to the raw material supplier. It could be in the form of cash, demand draft, check or online transfer. Another flow is the information flow. This flow happens back and forth between the supplier and the customer to coordinate the long term plans and to control the day to day activities. It could be in the form of the invoice, the order receipts, the sales data, etc. The last flow is the reverse product flow, which happens from the consumer to the producer for any manufacturing defects which have to be sent back to the supplier. Now let us see the basic supply chain in more of an animated way. Assuming that we have three different entities, supplier, producer and customer. So the physical raw material flows from supplier to the producer where the product is manufactured and assembled and ultimately it flows back to the customer which is the end customer so in this case the financial flow that happens is when the customer pays for the product and flows back to the producer and then back to the supplier then it the reverse flow of return goods from customer and to the producer for any manufacturing defect information flow it happens back and forth along the chain from supplier to producer to the consumer this is all the flows that we discussed recently now imagine that you are manufacturing a bicycle from scratch the first step in supply chain management is procurement which is like going shopping for raw material you need to build your bike cycle like a metal for frame rubber for tires and plastic for seat you need to find the suppliers who can provide you the material that you need to build your bicycle for example, you might need to find a supplier who specializes in providing the high quality metals for bike frames. Another supplier who specializes in providing the rubbers for bike tires. And third supplier who specializes in providing the plastics for bike seats. You negotiate with each supplier to get the best price in terms for your material. And then you place your orders to have material delivered to your factory. Once you have all the materials, it is time to start manufacturing the bicycles. It's like following the instructions to assemble the parts and then put them together to make the finished product. In manufacturing, you follow a set of instructions or blueprint to ensure that the bicycle is assembled correctly. Then comes the logistic part. In logistics, which involves planning the most efficient routes, managing the transportations, vehicle and tracking delivery to ensure they arrive on time. Once the product are manufactured, they need to be stored and transported to different distribution centers like wholesalers or directly to the retailers. For example, you might use truck to transport the bike to distribution centers where they can be shipped to wholesalers or retailers. 
then it can be shipped to the end customers. So you can ship the customers around the world by ship, road, or by air. In this entire process, it is essential to keep track of inventory level to ensure that there is enough stock to meet the demand without overstocking or tying up capital. This helps prevent the shortages and ensure the customers can always have the product when they need. That is the ultimate goal of the supply chain. That is the right product at the right price at the right location in the right quantity to right customer at the right time. If you are still watching this video, now is the quiz time. But before that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press the bell notification. Do like this video, share with this all your friends and colleagues and do comment and let me know your thoughts on this video. Read their questions and leave your answers in the comment section below. First question, what is the primary goal of supply chain management? Maximizing profit, minimizing cost, enhancing customer satisfaction, expanding market share. Which of the following is not a key component of supply chain? Supplier, manufacturer, distributors, competitors. Question three, which of the following best defines the supply chain management? The process of managing the movement and the storage of goods from supplier to consumer, coordination of all the activities involved in the sourcing and the procurement, strategic management of the flow of material, information and financing from supplier to customers, optimization of transportation, routes for efficient delivery. You can leave your answers in the comment section below.